Hello, this is a scrap metal video concerning the extraction of lead from cast iron sewage pipes. In a previous video I discussed identification of cast iron joints and elbows. Some of the pipes in that video had been used to transport water, such as this one, and some had been used to transport natural gas. But in both cases, the pipes had formed part of pressurized systems, by which I mean that the water pipes had been completely full of water and the gas pipes had been completely full of gas. Steel pipes threaded into various joints and elbows, such as this cast iron joint, and the threads are treated with either pipe dope or PTFE tape, such that the application is either watertight or gas tight. Pressurized system, the joints need to be good and tight. On the more modern buildings, the sewage pipes, also known as sewer pipes, waste pipes and soil pipes, tend to be plastic, but on the older homes and commercial buildings, you'll often find cast iron sewage pipes such as these. They are roughly cast pipes, large diameter, take water away from basins, baths, toilets. Uh, this trifurcating structure is uh, designed to uh, channel water from um, three toilets, uh, a three cell toilet block into one pipe. Now the joints on these cast iron sewage pipes are radically different to the joints of a pressurized water system. And there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that it's not a pressurized system. Most of the time these pipes are full of nothing but air. They're only carrying waste water and poo poo, which is why the pipes have to be large diameter, when a basin is run, a bath is emptied, a toilet is flushed. And the second reason is that the pipes can be compliant with gravity. Unlike a pressurized system, which has to run against gravity, for example, um, water has to be taken upstairs from ground level to first, second or third floors and beyond. In a sewage system, the water only has to fall from a higher level to a lower level and finally into a, either a septic tank or into the city's sewage system. So this pipe is, for example, this pipe is laying on the horizontal, but uh, imagine that this is the vertical. So this is the this is the high side, and I've I've drawn arrows here to illustrate the direction of flow. So this is downward from the centre toilet, and we've got another toilet here, water coming in this way, another toilet here, channeling into one pipe below. Now the high pipes are always male type fitting into the lower pipe, which is female. So, the joints don't need to be as strong and tight as in a pressurized system because it's, it's not pressurized, for one, and for two, the system is compliant with gravity. Now, it is, however, sealed by these lead rings. When the sewage pipes are put together, the lead rings are melted into place to seal one pipe inside the other. 
and um, as any good scrapper you'll want to separate your metals and you'll want to extract these lead rings for your lead bins okay so let's break up some of these pipes and, so and extract some of the lead rings and I think on this pipe I think we've also got a brass stopper or dead end here Okay, so, yep, that was a small piece of brass, but this is what I was really after, these lead rings. Um, here, that's another one. So every one of these joints has a lead sealing ring, and you'll want to extract all of that lead if you're getting your best value for money from your scrapping. Thank you for watching Extraction of Lead from Cast Iron Sewage Pipes.